Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, June 22nd. A new report claims that the Tesla Model 3 refresh will feature steering by wire, RGB lights, and a little more. Tesla Scope, a third-party companion app for Tesla owners, claims to have new information about the Model 3 refresh based on alleged discussions with Tesla employees. The report claims that the refresh is more significant than what we've been seeing in recent sightings. They say that it will include steer-by-wire, which Tesla does have a patent for and is coming out on the Cybertruck, and they also say that the refresh for the Model 3 will feature a new bumper camera and new matrix LED lights with RGB ambient lights. The rest of the report is a little vague, but mentions better audio and more comfortable seats. At Electrek, we take this with a grain of salt, especially since the information is a mix of precise new details and vague possible changes. Steer-by-wire is definitely the biggest news if it were happening. It's possible, but then again, a lot of things are possible. You might have seen plenty of media reports on Tesla having a secret autopilot mode called Elon Mode. And while it's certainly amusing, we have some more information. The reports are coming from a humorous title said by a well-known Tesla hacker whose name is Green. With root access to Tesla's onboard computer, Green has at times been able to unlock features inside the vehicles that have yet to launch or are meant for Tesla's internal testing. Green posted on social media that they were initiating autopilot without constant reminders to keep hands on the wheel. The function is what Green and many others speculate is used for Tesla's executives to test out full self-driving internally and perhaps Elon Musk himself. So in a tongue-in-cheek way, Green called it Elon mode. Larger media outlets have ran with the name as if it's actually from Tesla. It's not. But here we are. Now you know. Matt Jung, a fellow who has been diligently tracking Tesla's inventory, has reported some interesting changes as we approach the end of the quarter. Some markets are showing much lower inventory, leading us at Electric to wonder if Tesla was successful in liquidating their inventory or simply updating the system and removing duplicates. The biggest difference is the Model 3 inventory, which went down by almost 1,000 units last week. It makes sense considering the Model 3 vehicles got the most discounts for the longest period of time during the quarter. Jung says that Tesla briefly blocked access to the new inventory data, but it has since resumed. While the crash could be linked to the data update, our own check of Tesla's inventory in major markets like LA, New York, and San Francisco shows much lower inventory in line with his data. Tesla is an interested buyer of a small German-based wireless charging startup. This is interesting news considering that the automaker previously hinted at their own wireless charging pad shown in a presentation. In the past, Tesla has preferred a wired charging robot arm to automatically plug into a vehicle, but technology must have caught up in some expected way as a filing from a German-based wireless charging startup has confirmed that Tesla is an interested buyer. The company is called Wifirion and was founded in 2016. It's developed inductive charging solutions for industrial robots and electric vehicles, which both segments would be of particular use to Tesla. As excited as we are, this was an official filing, the source is solid, but it doesn't mean that the deal will close, but we'll keep you updated in the loop. Tesla says its long-awaited Dojo supercomputer, which is supposed to bring the self-driving effort to a new level, is finally going into production next month. Dojo is Tesla's own custom supercomputer platform built from the ground up for AI machine learning, and more specifically for video training using the vehicle data coming from its massive fleet. The automaker already has a large NVIDIA GPU-based supercomputer. It's one of the most powerful in the world. But the new Dojo Custom build is on Tesla's own chips, which were designed by Tesla. But now the company says that it is going to production in July. Tesla is expected to finally be able to take full advantage of its extremely large database of real-world driving scenarios, which has been accumulating through millions of miles for several years. Ford Motor Company is set to receive the single largest loan in the history of the Department of Energy's loan program office. The whopping $9.2 billion will be used to build three EV factories for Ford as they look to boost domestic capacity. The new project consists of three factories in collaboration with SK Innovation. One will be a nearly six-square-mile site in West Tennessee, 
along with an assembly plant, while the other two are being built at their Blue Oval SK Battery Park in central Kentucky. Altogether, Ford expects the three factories to generate 192 gigawatt hours of battery cells annually. The funding comes at a critical moment for Ford. After splitting into three businesses to focus on their individual strengths to accelerate the company as a whole, as they say, Ford expects its EV unit, which is called Model E, to lose $3 billion this year as they work to scale towards production. The founder and former CEO of Lordstown Motors has sold his entire stake in the company as they are expected to enter litigation with Foxconn. According to Lordstown's latest SEC filing, the former CEO, Stephen Burns, sold his stake in Lordstown on three significant occasions. Last month, Lordstown implemented a 1 by 15 reverse stock split designed to boost share prices as they hope to avoid filing for bankruptcy. Although the move has satisfied the NASDAQ's $1 minimum listing requirement, Lordstown said that Foxconn has still not acknowledged their obligations, and therefore Lordstown has threatened to take legal action. In today's community comment found on YouTube, some of you lamented at the gray skies ahead for Mazda's EV program and perhaps the whole company. The rotary engine was brought up, which is certainly an interesting system. My brother got into rotary some time ago, and he said it was great under certain conditions. His assessment was that the engine required different expectations and upkeep, and he believed that the public wasn't ready for even the slightest change in habits. I'm going to go a step further and guess that one issue was that Mazda had to hand over these different cars to regular old dealers who didn't care one bit how it worked. And that, my friends, is an experience that many of us have had in the electric vehicle age. Now, of course, I'm not trying to draw a parallel between the benefits of a rotary engine versus the benefits of electric, because that's not really what we're talking about. But the rotary was a standout engine in a sea of normalcy. In the future of Mazda, they will be the standout with their gas and hybrid programs in a sea of electric. There will be a place for gas cars in the medium term. I'm just not sure where in terms of passenger cars and in particular Mazda's current market. Maybe they'll switch to another industry. I don't know. Japanese companies never cease to amaze me with how many markets that they're in. Did you know that Panasonic does real estate? True story. Thanks for watching Quick Charge.